Welcome to Blue Compass, where we are excited to bring you today's webinar, How to Beat Your Competitors by Improving Your Website's Core Web Vitals. I'm Drew Hardin, and I'm really excited to be joined by a panel of websites and search engine optimization experts today. So our agenda is just going to begin by asking questions about Google's Core Web Vitals, what they are, what they mean for your website, and then what you can do to improve your search engine optimization and your core web vitals. And after those questions, we will move into your questions. We have a number of questions submitted by attendees and we'll jump into those. Those are mostly general search engine optimization questions that we hope you find a lot of value from. Uh, one of them has to do with what Google will be like in five years, so I'm really excited to get to that. And then as we approach the end, we will be giving away one free Google Core Web Vitals website audit to a lucky attendant. And so we will announce that at the end. So in 2020, Google did something rare and unusual in announcing a new search algorithm update referred to as Core Web Vitals that would hit in 2021. And that was an unusual because Google almost never announces algorithm updates before they launch which means that Core Web Vitals may potentially have a huge impact on website rankings. So simply put, Core Web Vitals are a new metric that Google is using to deduce the quality that each web page gives its users. And theoretically, if you can have a high Core Web Vitals score on one of your pages, then it will give users a good experience, Google will be impressed, rank it a little bit higher in search, and then you'll simply get more traffic. And so this is something that's going to start rolling out in June of 2021 and continue to roll out throughout the summer. And so let's introduce our panel of experts today. And first we have Katrina Rieger. Katrina Rieger is our digital marketing manager here at Blue Compass. And Katrina helps advance the online marketing presence of our clients by taking an integrated and comprehensive digital marketing approach. She has a passion for SEO and tracking the ever-changing world of digital marketing. And Katrina has worked with great clients like Salmon's Financial, Kemen Industries, EMC Insurance, and Ruan Transportation. And then we have Brady Rubin with us today, and she is a digital marketing strategist at Blue Compass. And specializing in user experience testing and research, Brady develops data-driven comprehensive digital marketing strategies designed to help clients meet their goals. And some of the great clients that Brady has worked with include Unity Point Health, Greater Des Moines Partnership, Des Moines Airport, and Briarcliff University. And last, but certainly not least, is Carrie Coppola, our CEO and the co-founder of Blue Compass, my business partner. And Carrie is an experienced executive with a diverse background in entrepreneurship, technology, and marketing, and his strengths lie in building client relationships, strategic growth initiatives, and his knowledge of web development. And Carrie has worked with great clients like Napa Auto Parts, Spalding Sports Equipment, Tone Spices, and the NFL. And one more housekeeping note, we will probably use the acronym CWV instead of Core Web Vitals. We talk about Core Web Vitals all the time in our office, and so we generally just say CWV. All right, with all that out of the way, let's move into our very first question, which is for Katrina. All right, Katrina, the question is, it's extremely rare for Google to announce a search algorithm update ahead of time. Why is Google putting such an emphasis on their CWV initiative? At Blue Compass, we believe the CWV initiative was announced early because it dramatically impacted the tools that are available to SEO experts. When Google did this, they rolled out a new set of items within Search Console. So within Google Search Console, we can now see new data points, new sets of information, which all tie into the CWB experience. And when Google brings something that large and makes that big of a change within Search Console, they need to give experts a reason why they're introducing this. So as they did that, they announced that they're gonna start paying more attention to not only site speed, but how a page loads, what all of those functionality items are, and that is something that made a big impact on what Google has available to us as data points. Therefore, they needed to give us a reason why we needed to start paying attention to it and start caring about it. Now, Brady, Google's core web vitals encompass three metrics, basically. Could you tell us what those metrics are? Yes, absolutely. Um, the first is the largest contentful paint. 
So that measures um, the first and largest element on your page that will load. So a lot of times in a lot of today's web designs, that's the big hero image on your homepage or a big video that loads right away on your homepage. So that's the largest contentful page. Google wants to see that load very quickly because it's the biggest element on your page. Uh, the second metric is the first input delay. So that measures uh, when a user is able to actually interact with the website. So not only does Google want the elements to load um, on your page, wants users to be able to see something right away, but they also want users to be able to click and interact with your web page right away. And the third is the cumulative layout shift. So that measures the elements shifting on your page after they've already loaded. So what Google wants to avoid there is websites loading um, elements, users to maybe start to want to interact, and then something else is still loading that moves everything around. And that one always makes me laugh a little bit because Google doesn't want your content shifting all around. And yet when you go to Google search results, you click on something and you come back, often Google search results actually shift and gives that very experience there telling us to avoid, yeah. which makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. So Brady, your question is that we've had numerous organizations reach out to us asking about Core Web Vitals. And you know, you hear a lot from clients, you're in communication a lot with clients. What concerns have you heard from businesses, nonprofits, organizations when it comes to CWV? Yeah, sure. One of the um, most first questions people ask is how important is it and how big of a deal is this really going to be? Is this going to completely upset our search rankings? Is it going to completely upset the organic traffic our sites are getting? Or is this just one out of 300 ranking factors that Google has sure. told us exist. So there's a lot of a lot of questions around that. And and what we think and what we see is that it is important because like Katrina said, Google doesn't announce very often ahead of time when an algorithm their algorithm is going to update and right. what exactly is going to update within that. So anytime Google does that, that's certainly important to pay attention to. Um, but also it is important to take into consideration that this page experience update and the core web vitals new metrics that websites are now being judged against are just one area of the search algorithm that um, exists for sites so there are hundreds of other ranking factors your content on your site is still very critical still very important all of those other things we do to optimize our websites um, but certainly important to pay attention to. So we see a lot of businesses really, really want to understand in the whole landscape of their website health, where does this fall? And it's of course important. We want users to have a positive experience on the website and we know they will get frustrated if they have to wait a long time for elements to load. So really like to set that foundation for them. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, businesses from my perspective have just felt really wary of this mm -hmm. update and I think one of the reasons is that Google just hasn't communicated a lot about it. Um, it there's a lot of unknowns still and so Carrie that brings us to your question which is you know is core web vitals a good thing is this a good move by Google has Google handled it well and how has this announcement impacted your perception and your opinion of Google I like that question so I think it is a good thing initially when we saw this come through we obviously felt like it was an overreach on Google's part telling us um, how we need to develop, how we need to develop for our clients. Um, but when you look at it and the core of the rankings that they put in place, they're all in the best of interest of their consumer, of their clients, which is the searcher. And so it puts a little more pressure on the, the web provider um, as well as the client to make sure that they're doing what's best at uh, heart for the customer of Google, which is again, the searcher. Um, and so I think it is a good thing. And I think it's a good thing because it looks at a holistic approach to your site. It's not a lot of new things that they're putting in place for CWB. What they're doing is trying to bring all the different ranking factors that fall now within CWB together. And that can be as, as much as site speed. It can be as uh, making sure that your site is coded properly, but it also has a lot to do with the American uh, Accessibility Act. And so what they want to do there is just make sure that you're giving a good experience to all walks of life and making sure that people can utilize your tools that you're putting out there. So yeah, I think it's at the best uh, interest of the, their consumer to make this happen. Sure. 
And you know, a lot of times marketers and business owners get frustrated at Google when they do things like this, which um, you know, we, we've felt that before and a lot of our clients have felt that before because I mean, Google kind of rules the web and when they tell websites to do something, I mean, there's a lot of pressure to do it. But I think you're right. There's a lot of good that can come out of this because Google's whole purpose here seems to be to simply speed up the web and just have people have a better experience on websites. Because today, I mean, there are so many websites that load slowly, that give a poor performance. And so the more pressure Google gives websites to improve, um, generally the better experiences there will be out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as far as whether or not Google handled this well, I actually appreciate that they gave us notice on this one and they gave us a little bit more documentation as to and tools to utilize to make sure we're giving a good, good experience for people. Um, so I appreciate that forewarning. What I didn't feel like is the mixed messaging was appropriate. So initially with a big camera, make this happen or else, and it's on this date, it can be a big ranking factor. And now it seems like they're a little bit more hesitant on that hammer and they're backing off a little bit. And we've seen even when they first launched it within Lighthouse or in, in Google Search Console, that some of the measurement tactics have changed or completely disappeared as far as what they're going to weight this ranking on. And so I feel like they put this out there with a lot of criteria and they're slowly backing it off a little bit. And it's probably due to the people like Blue Compass who are in there saying, there are limitations as to what we can accomplish due to the fact that there are tools out there that are not keeping up with the trends. Tools that are very important, including Google reCAPTCHA or Google Analytics or uh, a lot of the third-party tools that Google has developed, including YouTube embeds that do not follow suit uh, for core web vital best practices. And so I think they just pump the brakes a little bit on it. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that brings us to our stance on Google generally which is to follow Google's best practices, but do so cautiously. Because we've seen many times in the past when Google's best practices, when their suggestions haven't worked out so well, they've reversed them after a while, or they Google themselves hasn't followed these best practices. So generally Google's best practices are very positive for users and websites, but not always. I mean, Google's not perfect. And we always have to remember Google's has its shareholders to satisfy every quarter. And while Google does want to make great website experiences, they also have to satisfy their shareholders. They are a business and they have to make more money. And so a lot of what Google does is clearly driven for their own revenue, which isn't a bad thing, but sometimes it's, sometimes not everything they do is perfectly in user's best interest. It just depends. Yeah. All right, Katrina, next question for you. What's the best way for an organization to measure their core web vitals score? We recommend using an incognito window through Google. And when you use an incognito window, you're going to load the website. You're going to be able to inspect that element. And from there, you're going to be able to look at Lighthouse. Within Lighthouse, there's four core metrics and all of the CWB components that are being measured fall under that performance metric. Mm -hmm. So that's a great place for you to see that. At Blue Compass, it's our best practice to run it three times and to bring the middle score that you see. With Incognito Window, with Lighthouse, all of these things are pulling things that can be cached. It's very dependent on the individual search engine. So we run it multiple times to make sure we're getting an accurate representation of the data that's available. Because it can vary. Quite a bit, Quite a bit <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, it's imperfect. Right, which is a good example of why we trust Google. We know we need to be paying attention to this, but we can't put too much stock into this when they're not even consistent with how they're delivering those metrics back to us. Sure, so again, Google Chrome is the best tool to do this in. Yep. And there's other ways to measure Core Web Vitals as well, but we found that Lighthouse within Google Chrome seems to be the best and most reliable. Absolutely. And when you do it that way, you're actually looking at more factors than just Core Web Vitals and just CWB. Mm -hmm. Those are one of the four components we're looking at. We actually prefer that method because it gives us a lot more holistic measurement and we're able to see a lot more components that Google's also paying attention to. And while that's not what they're announcing today as a part of the search algorithm, we see Google taking extra steps on a regular basis. Other components within performance include site speed. We're also looking at the ADA compliance that Carrie spoke about earlier. We can see different SEO items, and there's a lot of factors in here, and we know those are all important to Google, even though they're not saying they're direct ranking factors today. Sure. So if someone goes out there and checks their homepage, 
and none of them are one hundreds. Is is that a cause for great concern? I would say it is. Yeah. Um, depends obviously on the score. If it's all low teens on those scores, then yeah, you have an area that you are really missing out on. If they're um, obviously in that yellow to green ratings uh, scale that Google has, then you're probably able to just pick and choose certain things that can make improvements. So if you're in red all across the board, you're in, you're in some dire straits. So. So, Ideally, we're looking to be in the 90 or above for all four of those metrics. Yep, yep. And as we've worked on this, we found that it's generally not too difficult. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to rewrite the entire site to get 90 or above in accessibility, in best practices, and in SEO. But performance, is, that's the one that encompasses Core Web Vitals, that one's the most difficult. Absolutely. We have a running joke in the office that the digital marketers are making this harder because a lot of the areas we run into trouble and we have lower scores for performance is because of our marketing tools. And like Carrie was stating before, those tools are very important. We want to follow Google's best practices, but we also still need to be able to do our jobs and we still need clients to be able to understand how their websites are performing. So things like Facebook pixels, Twitter pixels, Google Analytics even, which is a Google tool, and you would think that Google Analytics, even their new analytics of GA4, would be compliant with Core Web Vitals, but of course not. Google's keeping us on our toes. They're making this a little bit more challenging. So GTM and GA4 even give us hits when it comes to Core Web Vitals. Yeah, which is crazy, and at first that surprised us, but putting Google reCAPTCHA on your website, putting Google Analytics on your website, putting Google Tag Manager on your website, like putting Google's own technologies on your website can severely hurt that the core web vitals and that performance score. And so it's really a balance of putting on your site what you really need and measuring that with how important it is for you to rank well in that score. I think the, the key here is to just have an understanding of what is on your website. And we've worked with so many clients before where we ask them, did you know that you have this pixel on this page? And they'll be they'll respond, I don't know what that even is. And they don't realize yeah. that that is actually hurting the core web vitals. Yeah. So if we give a list to Katrina and Brady and say, hey, how important are these uh, third party tools that we have in there? Every single time they know they're on there, they know what they're doing and they know what marketing decisions they're basing off of to, for those tools. And they're important to them. Um, some clients, they don't realize that they have 12 different plugins that aren't even being utilized. So just taking an accountability of what is going on and running that score is important to start. Oh. There's many technical things that can be done to improve your core web vitals. But Brady, is there anything non-technical that maybe the average marketer or business owner or intern can do to improve their core web vitals score? Sure, yep. In addition to just like Katrina and Carrie were saying, making sure we're not adding too many pixels to the site, just that is very important too. Um, if there's anything not being used anymore, take it off. I know there are a lot of marketers who are in Google Tag Manager who place their own Facebook remarketing pixels. So a lot of us are aware of those. So if you know of some, if you know there are pixels that are three years old that you don't use anymore, go in, take those out as often as you can. Um, other than that, one of the biggest things that a website manager, somebody updating the website can do is to make sure to compress their images. So we see that come up a lot when we're running reports on sites um, for their core web vitals as really large images on the sites, even built in the templates, um, are required to load before a user can interact with the site. And if they're really large, if they're 200 kilobytes, 500 kilobytes, we see some that are 1,000 kilobytes. Those are way too big and they're gonna to take too long to load for users. So we always recommend um, if you're going in there, if you're updating the website, if you're publishing a new blog um, and you have a new image to go with it, be sure to compress it first. Um, our recommendation is to go below 100 kilobytes. So that's just a benchmark that we have that we set for ourselves and for our clients to make sure that those images won't slow down the load, load of the page. So a lot of different tools out there, a lot of free ones. Um, if you just Google a image compression tool, you'll be able to find one um, right away that you can use just to put your image in. Um, you'll be able to download it right away and then be sure to use that when you're when you're uploading images to your website. Yeah, one yeah. thing that we take for granted is that when we're developing sites, we usually have those best practices built in because they are positives for search engine results. Mm -hmm. And so we always make sure we have structured information on there, structured tagging methods, as well as um, having alt tags on images. 
But those are errors that you would get normally with CWP. Those are things in the best practices category that we would get hit, as well as the SEO category that can have hit. So just making sure you have proper tagging, H1s, H2s, P tags in the right order, as well as alt tags on all your images will, will help you as well from just a marketing standpoint. Yeah. When it comes to images, one of my favorites is headshots. You get such large files because everybody is it's really high res, exactly. And professional headshots, sometimes they're so small on a website, but pages that have a lot of those, we're always surprised by how slow those can load because you forget how much compression sure. needs to happen on those images. Carrie's headshot, for instance, is well over one gig. <laughs> it's very so important. You want to allow us to <laughs> yeah, compress it. It needs to be high depth. Yeah. <laughs> well, with that, we're going to move into our user submitted questions. I'm excited to go through these. But first, if your team could use help with search engine optimization, if you'd like a Core Web Vitals audit, if you'd just like some direction, our team would love to give you a hand. Don't hesitate to reach out to us here at Blue Compass. We have an amazing team of experts and we do this each and every day. We'd love to give you a hand with it. All right, and that brings us to our attendee questions. And so I'm gonna start off with Brady. We have a question from Lori. What is the best resource for measuring ongoing web health? Is Google Search Console being impacted by CWB and what are some of the best practices related to ongoing maintenance? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's so many great tools out there for keeping an eye on your website health. Um, a lot of great ones, a lot of them are free. One of the best ones you're gonna wanna use um, for your overall website health is going to be Google Search Console. Um, so in Search Console, you're able to see the performance of search of your website, how your pages on your site are performing, if they're showing up in search, how many clicks you're getting, overall performance metrics like that. And then you're also able to see any warnings and errors that Google is finding. So Google Search Console is where, that's Google communicating right to you, telling you we're finding a problem on your website and you should fix it. So we definitely recommend taking a look there. Um, in Google Search Console, there's actually a new page experience report that is specifically tailored around this new page experience update that's coming to their algorithm. So within that report, you're able to see an overall average of your Core Web Vital scores, um, whether you're passing, what URLs are maybe failing those scores, and it can give you some direction there of where you can make some improvements. You're also able to see within that same section any security updates and security warnings with your website. So anything to do with anything that's compromising the security of your website, you're going to find that there within that report, which is very, very important for your website health. And then one of the other areas that's also really important um, for you and for your website are any mobile usability issues. So this is a section in Google Search Console that's been around for a while. Um, but now it's getting combined into this page experience report where you're able to see any areas of your website that um, might be difficult for mobile users. So that can include any buttons or links that are too small for people's finger targets, um, any buttons that are too close together that are just difficult for mobile users to navigate. Those types of things are also right there within that report. So able to get a really good overarching view of your website health through Search Console. All right, Carrie, question for you. Looking for suggestions on tools to help keep our images consistently tailored for CWV when I have multiple website authors and editors? Nice, I like that question. So when it comes to having more than one author or contributor to your website, it's good to just make sure you're all on the same page as far as what your expectations are for publishing content. And so we all have that with our writing and voices that we put into our content. But making sure you have those same practices that you put or checkpoints that you put in when you're publishing images to your site are important too. So making sure that everyone is on the same page with the same steps that they need to do. And that includes making sure the images response are smaller and uh, optimized. And then making sure that you have alt tags on there, naming the file, the right file for keyword uh, search uh, parameters. And then not only that, you wanna make sure that everyone is just making sure that the image is around 100 kilobytes. Anything over than that is okay as long as it's close. Um, obviously there are certain images that will not get under 100 kilobytes, but anything that's in the meg or two meg size is just not acceptable. And so making it around 100 kilobytes is the first step and then just making sure that everyone is doing that together. Um, so that's ongoing, how you're going to get content published moving forward 
Um, but looking back on your site, it's not like your website is typically just brand new. Um, we're not all lucky to just start fresh. So you want to look at what your current image load is. And so if you just go to Google and type in image or website image optimizer or image auditor is probably the better way to do it. The first link on there is a really good tool. And what that will do is you'll put in any URL of your website, whether that's a news article or the homepage, and it'll pull in every image. It takes about two or three minutes to do, and it'll show you every single image and how it should be performing versus how it's currently loading in your website and different tactics to be able to optimize it. So it gives you a nice health score on all your images. And we have created here at Blue Compass a great image tool that helps your images be responsive and sized appropriately. And you've written an incredible award-winning article, Carrie, on this very tool, yep. which we will link to in the description of this video. Thank you. And if you guys could click on that and read it, that'd be great. You'd be the first. I'd appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true because we've had well over six people read it. So I'll thank my family later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, Katrina, a question for you. We're launching a couple of websites in the coming months, and we need to know where to focus our SEO efforts. We're gonna break this answer into two parts. So we're gonna talk about pre-launch and then launch day and what post-launch should look like. So as you're focusing before launch on what you can do to improve your SEO value, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is have really quality content available on your web pages. We're talking about a lot of technical components today. We're talking about CWV, but at the end of the day, quality content that has good keywords people are actually looking for in search engines is gonna be one of the best ways to help your website rank better. We always joke in our office that if you don't have a keyword on a page, how is Google supposed to know you even want the page to show up for it? So keywords matter and quality content really, really matters. The second factor you should be looking at pre-launch is your URL structure. And if there's going to be any changes to the URLs and the destination of your pages, you want to start putting together a 301 redirect map. So a 301 redirect helps users and bots understand what page the URL used to be and then where the URL lives now. So that's a really important factor. This helps if anybody has a page bookmarked, this helps if anybody finds an old social post and they click on a link, they're gonna to get to a good destination that you want them to end up at. This also helps Google back because Google has your website index, you have a lot of pages already available in search and a 301 redirect is gonna pass about 70% of the SEO value that a page currently has to its new destination URL. So those are two really big components you should be focusing on pre-launch. And then you have post-launch and launch day. So at Blue Compass, we have about, a, I think it's 75 point launch day checklist that all of our departments go through. So there's a ton of factors involved with that. But one of the biggest things you can do is go through an SEO audit. So figuring out where's our website at right now, what errors do we have? Are there any pages that didn't load? An SEO audit is also gonna help you uncover some of those technical dev pieces as well. When you're in development on a website, you usually want that hidden from search, you want that hidden from bots because it's a work in progress. On launch day, you wanna make sure all of those directives are removed and that it's then available to search. So running a simple SEO audit is gonna help you find any big red flags right off the bat that you would wanna know about and help you understand the health of your website as it stands today. The second piece you wanna do post launch is work within Search Console. And I know we're talking a lot about Search Console today. It's a super important tool that you have access to, but through Search Console, you're gonna be able to help Google understand what your new page map looks like. You can submit a site map that has all of your new URLs. That's gonna help Google remap that for you. And if you've changed your domain, for example, there's even a domain migration tool within Search Console that you can use to help Google understand where your new URLs live, and it can really speed up the process of getting your new pages re-indexed. All right, Carrie, the next question is for you, and this is from Dan. What is the simplest way to speed up our website's load time? Oh, that's a good question. So um, with any given website, the overall file size, the majority of what makes up that file size is typically the larger files. The larger files are typically images. And so just getting that big slice of the pie out of the way and making those as optimized as possible is the way to go. So there's a lot of tactics to go about that. You can just simply download the folder structure of all the images, scale those down, optimize them, and then re-upload them up, keep them the same name, and you can dramatically lower the overall weight of your website. That will help in just the speed index side of things. Um, then taking it a step further and creating different versions of each of those photos that are different scales of the device that people are using, whether that's a phone, to a tablet, to a desktop, 
and then uh, serving those up in a picture element using media queries will make sure that it's an optimized image no matter the device that it's, it's coming forward. A little more technically um, speaking, if there's a lot of different plugins that you're using, if you're using different content management systems that require a lot of different third-party applications that need to run to power different widgets that you've in installed on your site, a lot of those are very uh, bloated and they can be uh, brought down in file size by optimizing those code structures. So just getting in there and making sure that you're using only what you need to be able to serve the page is the way to go and your developer can help you with that. Carrie's comment about the image sizes brings up a good thought of um, when you're looking at your score for the Core Web Vitals, you'll see a mobile score and you'll see a desktop score. So when you're updating your images to comply with mobile devices, you also want to be sure that you're looking at your core web vital metrics for the mobile report. That's the one that Google is going to use when it comes to actually implementing the page experience algorithm update. So you really want to improve those mobile scores. Desktop is going to be important down the road, um, but mobile is Google's biggest focus. Yeah, typically when it comes to Blue Compass and how we develop, we develop mobile first. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously how we market, but it's, it's also how we develop. And so if we're developing for mobile first and we're optimizing for that, the tablet and the desktop sides of things will do just great if you're already developing for mobile first. And so that mobile score is the way to go. When we look at desktop, we typically score 90s or 100% on all four web vitals. And I'd imagine they do as well. Um, the harder task is getting that mobile optimized. Mm -hmm. Katrina, question for you from Troy. Have you found siloing content, in other words, rearranging content by searchable topics rather than by product lines or publication types to be an effective way to improve SEO? We see the most effective way to improve your SEO is to be as comprehensive of a resource for a topic as you can. So anytime you can answer multiple questions, you can talk about multiple subtopics of a topic within one content piece, you're really gonna be able to create a stronger, more SEO valuable resource for users. We see this in a couple different ways. We see the pillar piece functionality. So a pillar piece, you're taking a single topic and you're writing about every single thing that somebody could have a question about. You do that by Googling it. There's a lot of keyword research involved. And then you take a little bit of that information and you link out to all of the other applicable resources on your website that are available. So that's really important because it creates a really nice internal backlink structure and it helps develop that web of resources that a Google bot would need to see to understand what's all related to these content topics and what else you should be considering when thinking about this topic. It also shows, indicates um, an incredible amount of authority that your website might have on a topic. If you have this master pillar piece, if you have a lot of content that answers a lot of questions, that also indicates some authority to search engines that, you know, we know what we're talking about. Here are all the resources that we have for that. And then you brought up internal links, and I think that's kind of a missed opportunity sometimes on websites. And it's called the World Wide Web because it's simply a web of links. And, you know, the more internal relevant links you have between your pages, the easier people can find your content and the easier search bots can find your content as well. And so a lot of times we forget about that, but it's a pretty easy way to help build a little authority and SEO value on your website. Absolutely, people regularly ask about the power of backlinks and while external backlinks are helpful, usable, they're definitely a good SEO resource for you and help with the algorithm, your internal backlinks are equally as important and you have full control over that. You can control where you're linking, how often you're linking, and it's really helpful for, like Drew said, the bots to pick up on what other pages you have available. Mm -hmm. We see that can be really valuable from a local SEO perspective as well. If you are an organization that has locations in multiple cities, you might have five or six different location pages on your website that explains your different locations. And it's so important to be sure that from those location pages, you're linking to your service pages. And from your service pages, you're also linking to your location pages where those services are offered. So showing that linking between those two pages is also a really powerful signal to send to Google to show we are a business in this specific city. So anybody looking for services in this city, we're a really strong contender for those. Brady, the next question is for you. This is from Jason and he says, how often does Google crawl most websites? Should we and can we increase or decrease this? 
Sure, it can really vary. There's no one set time frame that um, Googlebot has for how often it crawls websites. Um, it can be daily for some sites. It can be once a week, um, probably more often, month to every couple months. We'll go through a regular process of your website, but it really varies um, depending on the site. It can vary depending on the size of your website. Googlebot um, is also really careful not to hit certain sites too often. They want to make sure that the website servers can withstand all of the bot traffic, so don't want to mess anything up there. So it's, it fluctuates quite a bit. It can also um, fluctuate depending on how often you're updating your website. So when Google is indexing and crawling websites, it's looking for changes in content as well. And it's looking for that indication that something has changed here and it should re-index, it should re-take um, re a look at this content. So there are a few ways where you can ask Google to re-index your content. Um, and it's most important to do that when you have made a positive change. So if you've really updated your content on a page, if you've added a bunch of that really great content, really great internal links um, to these pages and it's ready for Google to take a look at again, in Search Console, there's a functionality and an area of that tool where you can submit your URL to be re-indexed. It won't be indexed right away, but it will get into the queue and you're indicating to Google that you should take another look at this page because some positive updates have been made. You can also do that through Google Search Console again by submitting your site map. So you should have a site map on your site that updates regularly on our Blue Compass sites, site maps update and are re-uploaded to the site every night. So there is a, an indication in the site map that says this site map was updated today. If your site map has been updated recently and you've made some changes to your site, maybe you've made some of these core web vital updates, you can also submit that in Search Console to again indicate to Google that this site has changed, these URLs have been updated and they should crawl that whenever they're able to next. All right, Carrie, this question is from Jen and she says, why do you focus so much on Google and not as much on Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, etc.? Yeah, so we, we focus a lot on Google because um, Google has uh, a large market share. They run about 92% of all search. And so when you look at that and you look at where our clients are, they are typically in the Google uh, network. And so the other 8% of that is spread between Bing, DuckDuckGo, Yahoo. And, and we wanna make sure that we go where the clients are. And with DuckDuckGo, it's obviously a very well-known name. It's still only 0.6% of the actual share of the search. And so Google does a lot of good things. And when they do good things, a lot of their competition also does that. And so they implement a lot of the same uh, tactics that Google does. So they're a good uh, indication that if we're doing things well in Google, it will also be that we're doing good things yeah. in the other search. Yeah, it's like if you optimize for Google, more or less you are optimizing for those other platforms yeah. for the most part. Correct, mm -hmm. yeah. My favorite example of this is in 2020, Bing's top search term was people looking for Google and Google Chrome. So even in other search engines, people are trying to get to Google, which is why we place so much value on that platform. Yep. But um, one thing that we always look at is, especially when we're doing digital marketing services for clients, is where are their customers going to? And so within Google Analytics, you can look at browser history and see where people are going to and what they're using to be able to access our client site. So we always recommend that you don't always just judge based on the global usage of a search uh, and making sure that based on the actual client that you're marketing to, that they have the uh, browsers considered. All right, Brady, this question is from Mark, who says, can Google reviews help boost search engine rankings for businesses' website? Yeah, sure, they can, they can definitely have a positive impact. Um, like we talked about, there are tons of ranking factors, but where Google reviews come into play is they help indicate that trust and authority and expertise um, for users and to Google. So we often talk about that from an SEO perspective, um, its acronym is EAT. So you wanna show expertise, authority, and trust. If your content, if your website does that, that's gonna be really, really important and really impactful. So when you have reviews, especially positive ones that are telling Google and other users that um, you're really great at the service, you have really great products, you're, you're indicating, you're sending that signal of trust and authority. So it can really have a positive impact there for Google. 
They can also be really powerful for, for users themselves. So if a user is, is looking for a service near them, they see a few, a few names listed there, and you have four times as many positive reviews as maybe somebody who's ranking above you, uh, the user is more likely to click on yours. That, that's really impactful and that really um, grabs their attention. So not only you're making Google happy, but if users are clicking on your website, choosing you, going to your website, having that really positive experience, that's really beneficial overall for your SEO as well. All right, and last but not least, Katrina, this is a great question from Catherine, and I'd love to hear uh, everyone's thoughts on this, honestly, but the question is, where do you see SEO headed in the next five years? That is something we are regularly talking about. We see Google changing so fast, so our team needs to stay on our toes and make sure we're keeping up with what we're gonna see next. And one of the things that we are predicting to see within Google search is even more personalization than we see right now. So Google, everybody has a Google account these days, you know, and when you're searching from your own personal Google account, they're taking stock of how are you interacting with that page versus how is somebody else. So Brady and I can make the exact same search Brady's going to be drawn to a different specific result. She might be drawn to a different type of result. She might start expanding FAQs, reading more about that. Um, I might be clicking on a the first thing I see, you know, and as each of us has our own different pattern with that, Google is also going to have a different way that they're going to start serving us content. And another example of that is how you digest content as you're interacting with your phone or your computer. For example, I hate video. I do not want to listen to a video. I would rather read an article. And so I know Drew personally likes video. And when we're both doing the same search, Drew has a lot more video results showing up in comparison to what I have. And that is gonna to continue to become more and more extreme over the next five years. We also expect to not have as many pages available within search. We regularly joke that one of the best places to bury a dead body is on page 10 of Google search because no one's gonna make it there, no one's gonna find it. And as Google becomes more purposeful about how they're using page one, as they start enhancing what that experience looks like and starts pulling more and more content into that page in a non-traditional search result format, it's gonna help them eliminate the need for those extra pages and eliminate the need for pages two through 10. So we expect eventually to see only one page of results. We also expect that page to potentially not have traditional search result listings. And when we say that, we're talking about like the old school, we have 10 organic search results that have a headline and a description on that page. We already know that there's on average only eight organic results on a page instead of 10. So we're already seeing that move. We're starting to see more things like those FAQs available. We're seeing things like position zero, which is that large featured snippet with enhanced information, a link, images, all of that at the top. And we are seeing things like knowledge panel showing up on a regular basis for terms people are regularly using. We know that Google is in the business of making money. They're there to make sure that their stockholders are happy and that they have the revenue they need at the end of the day. So Google's really taking the content off of your website, pulling it into those search results and serving that in any way they can. Mm -hmm. And that seems like a really negative thing because for Google to take content away from our websites and to put it on its own website sounds a little shady, but I think it really emphasizes just the importance of search engine optimization and how important it is to be in the first ranking because Google pulls that from the best website, it pulls the best answer. And if you are featured in one of those answers at the top of Google, um, it can give your website and your brand incredible um, clout yep. with users and it can bring more people to your website and bring you more awareness. And another thing that we say here at Blue Compass is that Google is taking the web away from those who don't take their website seriously. And so if you are not going in and updating your site with great content, if you're not improving its core web vitals, if you're just kind of letting your site sit out there and not improving its user experience, then Google will likely just start to not rank your site for the terms for which you want to rank. And you might only show up just for your branded search, I mean, just for your organization's name. And so I think as things go on in the future, like just having a quality website with a really good experience only becomes more valuable. And, you know, Katrina, you mentioned potentially um, 
position two through 10 going away. I think that's really true. And you look right now at voice search. Um, you search for something in voice search, those positions have gone away. And we think about how, you know, the Internet of Things and how Google will probably be more integrated into more things other than just our phones and our computers in the future. Maybe your refrigerator and other things like that. I mean, Google's already starting to be integrated into those things. And so being in that position, one of Google will probably only become more important as time goes on. We regularly get questions about, aren't you worried about not getting a click because your website is showing up in that position zero, or if you're giving all the information away in that FAQ, people don't have an incentive to click to your website anymore. And honestly, we do not see that playing out for our clients. Anytime we're in an FAQ, anytime we're occupying an enhanced feature within search results, we see improved organic metrics to those pages for Blue Compass and for our clients as well. So that's definitely not something we're afraid of. We also like to say, if we're not there, our competitor's gonna be there. And why would we want them to have that brand equity and that space within search results? If somebody's gonna be there, it might as well be us. Yeah, at the end of the day, a lot of, the, a lot of websites and a lot of companies are selling a product or service, and they're not going to be able to purchase a service directly from the search result. And even if you're showing up in that featured snippet, um, they need to click and they need to contact you in a lot of cases as well. So it's important to, organic traffic to your site is great, but you wanna follow all the way through and take a look at the conversions too. Because at the end of the day, they might get the answer to, to one question by just glancing, but they need to click through to read more content, to learn more about you and eventually convert too. So still a ton of value by showing up there. We hope those insights were really helpful for you. And again, if we can give you a hand with Core Web Vitals, with your search engine optimization, with building a new website, we would love to help out. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. And we're excited too to announce the winner of our Core Web Vitals audit. And it is Rick from Dart. Rick will reach out to you and follow up with next steps. So thank you again for joining us. We appreciate your time. We'll talk to you next time.